Three years and eight months after the nuclear accident in Fukushima, more than 120,000 people are still living as evacuees, both inside and outside the prefecture. Today, we focus on the small village of Itate in a rural area about 40 kilometers northwest of the nuclear plant. Right after the accident, the government issued an evacuation order for people living within 20 kilometers of the plant. Three days after that, another order warned residents within 20 to 30 kilometers to stay indoors. Itate was just outside of that zone, but was still heavily contaminated. Almost all the residents left their homes, and today they're unhappy with the lack of progress in their area. NHK World's Noriko Okada reports. On November 14th, a group of Itate residents filed for arbitration with the Center for Settlement of Fukushima Nuclear Damage Claims. The center's purpose is to mediate in dispute between victims of the nuclear accident and Tokyo Electric Power Company. The claim brings together about half of the village's 6,000 residents. Our lives haven't improved at all in the three years and eight months since the accident. We felt we had to express our anger. In their claim, the residents underline that, unlike other areas, Itate wasn't evacuated immediately after the nuclear accident. They also accuse the government of knowing in advance that wind would spread radioactive particles over the village. The villagers demand compensation from TEPCO for the psychological suffering they endured because of their prolonged exposure to radiation. They also want to be compensated for what they call disruption of their lives in Itate. Among the petitioners is Tadayoshi Sato. He currently lives with his wife and mother in a temporary housing complex in Fukushima. Before the accident, the Satos lived under the same roof with their son, his wife, and their four grandchildren. But now, most of the family lives in Tokyo. They only get to meet about twice a year. Sato says that right after the accident, he left his grandchildren outside to play without knowing that radiation levels had become extremely high. I've heard some specialists say something could happen in five, seven or ten years. So what will happen to the kids over the next five or ten years? Nobody knows. Sato used to grow rice and vegetables on his seven hectares of land. The property that had fed his ancestors now lies heavily contaminated with radioactive particles. This is not about the money. We've lost absolutely everything, and we have no idea where we're headed. How long will it take to get Itate back to what it was? Ten years? 20 years? TEPCO officials say they will sincerely consider the claim following the arbitration procedure. Sato and the residents of Itate hope their petition will shed light on TEPCO's responsibility and help the evacuees get their lives back in order. Of a nuclear power plant in central Japan may have to decommission one of its reactors. Experts with Japan's nuclear watchdog have said a fault running under a reactor at the Tsuruga nuclear plant could move in the future. The Nuclear Regulation Authority came to the same conclusion in May last year. Officials of the plant's operator, Japan Atomic Power Company, then submitted new data disputing that assessment. But an NRA panel on Wednesday reaffirmed last year's conclusion. They said the fault could shift. New regulations do not allow operators to build reactor buildings and other key facilities atop such faults. 
If the authority does not overturn the panel's assessment that Tsutuga reactor cannot be restarted and may have to be decommissioned, the operator, uh, Vice President Taiki Ichimura, said the panel's conclusion is a unilateral assumption and expressed confidence it would be proved wrong. He also said the company welcomes the opportunity to challenge the panel's assessment. Well, Prime Minister Abe has asked for cooperation from business and labor leaders in raising wages and improving working conditions. Abe spoke at a meeting of members of government together with business and labor leaders. A member introduced a Japanese firm which has successfully boosted performance by introducing a four-day work week. Uh, the company did this, they say, without cutting employees' salaries. A proposal by a government panel suggested productivity could be increased if firms gave employees more than four days off in a row. Japan must change its culture of excessively long working hours. We should revise our attitude to leisure and holidays. And if our government can agree with business and labor on future wage hikes, this would greatly help in the creation of a virtuous economic cycle. Abe suggested if Japanese firms revise their work practices, they could improve their labor productivity. Of the Japanese Olympic Organizing Committee are trying to cut rising construction costs ahead of the 2020 Games. So they're considering moving some of the events west of the capital. They met with officials from the International Olympic Committee in Tokyo. They spent two days reviewing preparations. Members of the Japanese Committee say they're thinking about using existing facilities or those already under construction. They had planned to construct new buildings for basketball, badminton, sailing, and water polo. They're also considering using a venue in Osaka in response to a request from the Japan Football Association. The stadium is now under construction. The head of the IOC Coordinating Committee, John Coates, said he thinks using existing facilities is important. Coates praised preparations for the Tokyo Games. He said progress on the venues is going well. Yoshiro Mori, president of the Tokyo 2020 Organizing Committee, said the soccer venues need approval from the sports governing body, FIFA. Leaders from many countries around the world are becoming concerned about the increasing risk of terror attacks. England and Australia recently raised their alert levels, and officials in Japan are taking no chances. They've been stepping up their preparedness ahead of the 2020 Summer Olympics and Paralympics in Tokyo. NHK World's Masami Ukon reports from the front lines of the city's efforts to ramp up protection. Men in heavy hazmat suits carrying several injured persons out of a subway station. It looks like a scene from a sci-fi movie, but it's a real drill. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government has just began a massive drill with about 300 people simulating a terror attack on the subway system. The drill took place on Thursday in Tokyo, assuming a sarin gas attack on the subway system. Officials are thinking about the deadly sarin gas attack on the system about 20 years ago. The lethal gas was released into packed trains. Thirteen people died and more than 6,000 were injured. A lack of knowledge about the poison gas and insufficient cooperation among various organizations presented major challenges during the crisis. Ten divisions of firefighters, police and ground self-defense forces took part in the Tokyo drill. Station staff guided commuters to the exit. Firefighters in hazmat suits tried to talk to assumed victims to see if they were conscious before carrying them outside. To prevent secondhand contamination, rescuers also practice decontaminating victims in the makeshift tent. Workers cut away the victims' clothing and shower them with hot water to wash away the deadly agent. As the host city of the 2020 Summer Olympics and Paralympics, Tokyo is drawing a lot of attention from around the world. I'm aware that our city could be vulnerable to terrorists, so we would like to do our best to reduce any damage. 
the urgent drill caught the eye of passers-by as well. I'm relieved to know about and witness this kind of realistic drill. It's not just a matter for officials. I think we all need to think more about how to protect ourselves. The Summer Olympics and Paralympics are just six years away. Japan faces pressing challenges to boost its resilience against possible terror attacks. The city must also boost awareness, not only in related officials, but also in each and every citizen. Masami Kong, NHK World, Tokyo. Of foreign visitors to Japan so far this year has exceeded 10 million. The weaker yen and relaxed visa requirements for people from Southeast Asian nations spurred more travelers. Officials at the Japan National Tourism Organization say more than 1.27 million people visited last month. That's up 37 percent from a year ago. The total number of tourists this year hit the 10 million mark in October, two months earlier than last year. Japan is drawing more visitors partly because more items on store shelves have been made tax-free for their benefit. Also, more international flights now use Tokyo's Haneda Airport. Foreign visitors are also spending more during their stay. Japan Tourism Agency officials say expenditures in the July to September period came to around $4.7 billion, an all-time high. Tourists from mainland China accounted for about one-third of the figures. Tourism officials say they project the annual total to reach around $13 million as the yen has weakened further. The government hopes to increase the number to $20 million a year by 2020. That's when Tokyo will host the Summer Olympic Games. In northeastern Japan are investigating the effects of the 2011 earthquake and tsunami on spawning salmon. They want to see if there's any difference between fish born before and after the disaster. A spawning salmon normally returns to its birthplace when it reaches three to five years of age. A highly developed sense of smell allows the fish to identify the river where it spent its early life. However, the disaster in 2011 and following reconstruction work greatly altered the riverbeds in northeastern Japan. Researchers at the University of Tokyo's Atmosphere and Ocean Research Institute tagged 70 salmon caught at Otsuchi Bay in Iwate Prefecture. To track the fish, radio receivers were placed around the bay and at river mouths. A trial study last year found only 6 out of 18 salmon born before the disaster made their way upstream. 7 salmon never entered rivers at all. The current study focuses on how the fish travel upstream according to their date of birth. The age of each salmon is estimated by examining the number of rings on a fish scale under a microscope. Much of salmon behavior remains a mystery. We hope to clarify the effects of the tsunami on spawning habits. We want to help revive the fishery in areas affected by the disaster. The research will continue until winter, and a follow-up study is also planned for the same period the lower next yen year. is making many people from around the world choose, choose Japan as a holiday destination. Lots of them like Japanese food. An online restaurant guide and a U.S. travel site are teaming up to help tourists find the meal of their dreams. People who use Gurunabi's foreign language service currently need to phone a call center to make a reservation. But sources say U.S. travel site TripAdvisor will tie up with Gurunabi to let tourists make reservations online. The new service will cover about 1,000 restaurants in Tokyo and Osaka. The firms plan to expand it to about 50,000 restaurants across Japan. A record 10 million tourists visited Japan in 2013. It looks that record will be broken this year. The number already topped 10 million Members in from October. around Japan have been waiting impatiently for this Thursday. Visitors at a hot spring resort near Tokyo enjoyed this year's Beaujolais Nouveau in a unique way. The resort arranges baths at a spa into which 12 bottles of this year's vintage have been added. A beauty queen from France's Bourgogne wine producing region poured the wine into the spa. Bathers scooped up the red-tinged hot spring water to enjoy the aroma, while others rubbed it on their faces and bodies. They also drank a few glasses of the wine. I feel like my entire body is dyed wine red. I'm very happy.